New York City's LaGuardia Airport, March the 22nd, 1992. A commuter plane with 51 people on board tries to lift off the runway. Rotate. But the pilots can't get it to climb. They knew they were in trouble, but uh, they were fighting all the way to the end. US Air Flight 405 plunges into the icy waters of Flushing Bay. 27 people die. For U.S. investigators, it's an open and shut case. This accident was not a huge surprise to us. But Canadian investigators are stunned. They know the New York accident should never have happened. My reaction when I heard about it was, my God, it's Dryden all over again. Three years earlier, an exhaustive investigation into a crash at a remote northern airport had identified a killer and spelled out ways to keep it from striking again. Certainly, if they had uh, followed the recommendations in my report, the uh, F-28 crash at LaGuardia could have been averted. The LaGuardia accident makes one thing clear. The right people never got the warning. March the 10th, 1989. It's 11.39 a.m. at Dryden, Ontario's airport. Light snow falls as Air Ontario Flight 1363 stops in the remote northern community on its way from Thunder Bay to Winnipeg. The passengers stay on board while the plane is refueled. For flight attendant Sonia Hartwick and the crew aboard the Fokker F-28, it's been a frustrating day of delays. Big, fluffy, white snowflakes at this time were falling gently to the ground, and uh, it was very, very gray. And I thought, hmm, I guess this means we're going to be delayed again. I can't see us making it to Winnipeg on time. It's Friday, the beginning of March break. Already an hour behind schedule, another delay could jeopardize the vacation plans of many of the 69 passengers and crew. There was a lot of families traveling on board with plans. Uh, most of them were going skiing, and uh, so they were very concerned about meeting their connections in Winnipeg. Kenora Dryden, it's Ontario 363. Ontario 363, Kenora. As First Officer Keith Mills checks on weather conditions, Captain George Morwood returns from making a phone call inside the airport. It's getting worse. What's the latest? Check that. Quite heavy snow. Looks like it's going to be a bad one. It's still within our takeoff limits. Well, that's good. We got a lot of people who want to make their connectors. Let's hope it holds. Temperatures hover around freezing. Visibility is decreasing. If the flight doesn't leave soon, it could be grounded indefinitely. Dryden is a very small city. It's a very remote part of Ontario. With a population of about 6,500, the isolated community lies halfway between Thunder Bay and Winnipeg. Harsh Canadian winters with bitter cold reaching minus 35 degrees Celsius are the norm here. It's not the place to be stranded in the middle of a snowstorm. Royal Canadian Mounted Police Officer Don Crawshaw and his partner are escorting a prisoner to Winnipeg. When we did a criminal check on the prisoner before we left, he came up as a violent person. So two of us have to go with him. He was wanted in Banff on a fraud charge, and uh, that's what he was bringing back, back to uh, Alberta for. Hey, no smoking and seatbelts. On. Instruments. Sinks. Cross check. Captain Morwood uses the power of engine number two, already running, to fire engine number one. Morwood and Mills are both highly experienced pilots. However, they've each flown fewer than 100 hours in the Fokker F-28. 
The multi-million dollar aircraft is the first Air Ontario jet to serve the remote northern Ontario region. 24 minutes after landing in Dryden, flight 1363 is ready to leave. Inform Kenora, we're rolling. We're fired up, taxiing for departure, requesting airways to Winnipeg. Hang on a sec, guys. Is there a chance that plane can hold? We're having some bad weather up here. An approaching aircraft's urgent request to land... Unbelievable. ...gives Captain Morwood little choice. He delays takeoff. Okay, 363 is holding short of the active. We are going to be a few moments until a small plane lands safely. We're sorry, folks. This just isn't our day. In the two years that I had flown with Air Ontario, I'd never come across anything like this before. The Cessna 150 lands safely, clearing the runway for flight 1363's departure. Tell them we're going immediately. Kenora, Ontario, we're taxiing out at this time, 363 Dryden. Finally, an hour behind schedule, the plane taxis to runway 29. As we're going down the, the runway to position for takeoff, the blanket of snow was falling and I couldn't see the tree line anymore. It was like looking through a shear. Folks, we're sorry for the delay. Flight attendants, please be seated for takeoff. At 12.09 p.m., flight 1363 is ready for takeoff. Advise Kenora, we're ready to proceed. And Kenora Dryden, Ontario, 363 is about to roll 29 at Dryden. Ontario 363, Kenora, Roger. Captain Morwood performs a brief engine run-up, heating the engines to rid them of any accumulated snow and ice. Then he begins his roll down the runway. When we're taking off, I'm usually very quiet and focused, meticulously going through a checklist in my own mind, what would I do in the case of an emergency? E1. The F-28 reaches its takeoff speed. Rotate. 80 knots. Our takeoff was very slow and sluggish, like a slow, sluggish person running up a hill. Clearly, there's something wrong. The F-28 struggles to get airborne. We cleared the trees. Uh, the plane started shaking. I thought, oh my god, we're, we're gonna crash. That's when all hell broke loose. If you can equate to being in a mix master, that's what the plane felt like at the time. There's this dip to the left and then dip to the right. The pilot's trying to get this plane up. Then all of a sudden, there was a power burst. The plane seemed to stabilize itself. You could feel that the pilot's trying to get control of it. But a few seconds later, it became a mix master again. I yelled out, emergency, grab your ankles, get your heads down. Grab your ankles, get your heads down! And I kept yelling that, and then I assumed my brace position. You could hear people screaming and yelling. There's loud, horrible sounds. We are clearly crashing. The pilots are helpless. 49 seconds after lifting off. Air Ontario Flight 1363 crash lands in the bush, 950 meters west of runway 29. There is carnage of uh, the aircraft all over the place. I didn't know where I was. And at that point, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm alive. I'm still alive that this is all happening so quickly. When we crashed, we came down on an angle. It ripped the right side of the plane open. And that's how we got out, or else we probably would have never gotten out. Now, the prisoner was still in handcuffs, so I reached over and I took the cuffs off of him there, but he never left me. And then we exited the aircraft. There's fire all around, there's explosions. 
And I'm thinking, oh my god, we're full of fuel. Guys, come this way. And 